Well, good afternoon. Um, this is Pastor Varga with the Daytona Rescue Mission. Um, I'm going to have a chaplain's meeting here. I'm at police headquarters um, in a little while, and so I'm going to make my um, Facebook from, from here today. Uh, we're going to be in the Psalms. I, of course, I suggest that our people would... Um, read the Bible through in a year, reading in Jeremiah in the Old Testament and in Hebrews in the New, 14 minutes a day you get through the Bible in a year. Sometimes if I look at the Psalms and the Proverbs, we're going to look at um, Psalm 16 today. One of my favorites, especially the last verse in it, verse 11. So uh, we're glad you're with us today on Facebook. And um, we... Uh, we weren't on yesterday, apologize for that, but here we are today. Psalms is great, it keeps us right with God, it keeps our hearts sweet. Psalm 16, uh, it starts out, and uh, it's of course the Psalm of David, and it says, Preserve me, O God, for in thee do I put my trust. Now that's a wonderful thing to put our trust uh, in the Lord Jesus Christ. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Lean not on thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, the Lord Jesus, and he shall direct thy path. So the psalmist here, and it can encourage us in the 16th Psalm. To, in fact, I texted out verse 11 today. Uh, in my texting, I texted, I haven't done all that today. It's some of you haven't got yours yet, a couple hundred people. Anybody wants to get on my texting for the day, I text out each day. Sometimes I miss. I try not to. I've, I've got about a 30 you done today, and uh, I've been a busy day, and I've got a chaplain's meeting here come up in a little bit. But I'm texting out from Psalm 16, verse 11 uh, today. Uh, Preserve me, O God, for in thee do I put my trust. Now, I, some trust in, in uh, money, some trust in guns, some trust in this. I'll put my trust in the Lord. And I encourage you to also. Verse 2, it says, O my soul, thou hast said unto the Lord, thou art my Lord. My goodness extendeth not to thee. O Lord, thou art my Lord. Oh, what a wonderful thing it is that we have uh, the Lord God Almighty. God the Father, God the Son, Jesus Christ, and God the Holy Spirit, uh, our God, our Lord. That's wonderful. Verse 3, it says, But to the saints that are in the earth and to the excellent in whom is all my delight, God delights in his saints. He delights in you and I that are born again. We that have believed on the Lord Jesus Christ and been saved, uh, God delights in us, as it tells us here in Psalm 16, 3. The fourth verse of Psalm 16, our, our uh, chapter for today, it says, uh, Their sorrows shall be multiplied that hasten after another God. And some have other gods. We have a lot of false gods. We have a lot of cults around. I had to put a put a man out of the church here about a week ago now, and he was a cultist. Uh, uh, he was a believer in a Yahweh cult. Uh, their headquarters are in Texas, and and uh, those um, kind of uh, uh, folks uh, that are cultists, he firmly held belief in it, so you know, I didn't want him around the church um, trying to lead people astray to follow a cult. He, he followed a different God. Uh, he didn't believe in the God of glory, the God that I serve, uh, a heavenly Father that I'm saved uh, because he sent his son, Jesus Christ, down to this earth to shed his blood for my sins. All of these cults and false gods, they have belief in some type of work salvation and or, or something other than the true and living God. Uh, it says, uh, 
hasten after another god their drink offerings of blood. Uh, some do sacrifice blood, and and uh, we've even got Christian, so-called Christian people that sacrifice blood. The Catholics, uh, they kill Jesus every day, and they say it's his blood. They call it transubstantiation, so there's a lot of others that also, but uh, how horrid that is to blaspheme God and say that they're uh, drinking his blood every day and when they sacrifice the Mass. How horrid, uh, how terrible. Uh, many millions follow that to their destruction in the fires of hell uh, and take up their names uh, into my lips. Verse 5, the Lord is the portion of mine inheritance. You know, I've got an inheritance, and you do too if you're saved. The Bible says it's incorruptible, undefiled, that fadeth not away, reserved for us in heaven. Wow, that's a wonderful thing to have this uh, inheritance in heaven. Oh, we might not have much here. I don't have any rich relatives. I'm not expecting a lot of money to come in. I'd run rich Uncle John, and uh, he died, and his wife died, and I never got a penny from him. It's the only closeness I had. He had, he wasn't what, like a real, real rich person, but he had money, owned a few companies and things, but um, uh, I saw nothing of that. His... Uh, daughter was a lawyer and and after they died uh she indicated to me that he was dead and um and that was it i guess it was kind of a letter to signify that you didn't get nothing but uh i've got an inheritance i didn't need nothing from uncle john uh i've got it inheritance in glory by the way anything you get from people down on this it could be millions it could be whatever but you'll leave it behind the only inheritance that matters is the inheritance that we'll have in heaven as true believers in the Lord Jesus Christ. Um, it says, uh, The Lord is my portion of mine inheritance, and of my cup thou maintainest my lot. Isn't that wonderful? Verse 6, The lines are fallen unto me in pleasant places. God does pleasant things for us. Amen. The lines are falling in pleasant places to we that believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah. Verse 7, I will bless the Lord who hath given me counsel. Boy, I want God to tell me what to do. A lot of times we make wrong, I do and you do, we make wrong decisions because we get the wrong counselors. You should listen to unsaved people. I don't go to unsaved lawyers. I don't go to unsaved, I go to saved people. People of the world, uh, the, the, it says the wisdom of the world is foolishness to God, and the wisdom of God is foolishness to the world. So my counselors are preachers and godly people. I, I, I get legal counsel at times. I get it from, uh, I have a number of different legal organizations that are Christian organizations. Uh, David Gibbs, CLA, and uh, uh, the guy from Liberty Council, uh, I'm trying to think of his name. Now I haven't dealt with him in a number of years, but he's a good Christian counselor, and they have a Christian uh, law firm that uh, exclusively works with helping Christians. Um, and so, but I get godly counsel from pastors and Christian lawyers and Christian business people because you can't learn anything from the devil. And the prince of the power of the air runs all this stuff and. And and so uh, I get my counsel from God directly, praying to God, and from his people who have given me counsel. My reins also instruct me uh, in the night seasons. You can I can sleep good at night because I see God and I talk to him, and, and he leads me, and I sleep good at night. Do you? How are you doing? <laughs> you better trust God more. Verse 8, I've set the Lord always before me. Set God always before you. Don't set the problems. Don't set worldly people. I've set the Lord, verse 8, I've set the Lord always before me because he is at my right hand. I shall not be moved. The songwriter says, I shall not be, I shall not be moved. I shall not be, I shall not be moved. Like a tree planted by the water. I shall not be moved. How about you? I'm immovable. 
because I'm on the solid rock, Jesus Christ. So I'm immovable. Uh, I've set the Lord always before me because he's at my right hand. I shall not be moved. And they wrote that song because of this 116th. They wrote the song because the 116th Psalm, uh, verse 8, verse 9. Therefore, my heart is glad. You see, a true Christian that's following God and in God's security and in movable position, uh, we're glad. I'm not sad, I'm glad. I'm not, I like another song that says this, Are you downhearted? No, no, no. Are you downhearted? No, no, no. Troubles may come and troubles may go. We trust in Jesus, come we, Lord. Whoa. Are you downhearted? Not the best whistler. No, no, no. Well, that's the way it is, you see. Uh, so uh, uh, I'm not downhearted. For thou wilt not leave my soul in hell. Oh, my Lord, I don't have to go to hell. I'm saved. My sins are forgiven. Neither wilt thou suffer thine holy one to see corruption. Verse 11, and this is my favorite verse in it. It says this, Thou wilt show me the path of life. In thy presence is fullness of joy. Thou wilt show me the path. See, God will show us from... You get saved and you're following God. It says, uh, Thou wilt show me the path of life. In thy presence is fullness of joy. And at thy right hand there are pleasures forevermore. What a wonderful psalm. I read the psalms every day of my life because it gets us close to God. How close are you to God? Uh, are you in his presence? If you're not saved, you can't come into his presence. There's only one way to come into his presence to be close to him to be a born-again, blood-washed Christian. I'm saved. I was saved April 4th, 1969. I was saved in a Methodist church. My mother and father were Assemblies of God missionaries. I'm a Baptist preacher. It's not the Assemblies of God. It's not the Methodists. It's not the Baptists. It's Jesus that saves and Him alone. Are you saved today? That's my question. I hope you are. I'm going to pray the sinner's prayer. And uh, I hope you'll join me in it if you're not saved and receive Christ as your Savior right now. This is a prayer. If you're not saved, pray it with me. Dear Lord Jesus, I believe you died for me and shed your precious blood. On Calvary's cross, I rose from the grave the third day. The best I know how with an honest heart, I turn from my sins receive you as my Savior. Thank you for saving me right now. Listen, dear one, if if you prayed that prayer today and you've never been saved before, let me know about it. And I hope you have. And Christian, I hope it's encouraged you today that uh, this 16th a Psalm, which is always a great encouragement to me, maybe you need to send it to someone, a friend of yours, a relative, whatever, Post it. I don't know much about Facebook other than I know who to hit live. I know how to hit finish, which I'm going to hit here in a minute. And I know how to post it. I don't know much else about Facebook. But I know it's a good way to get the gospel out. Uh, so share it with someone. Maybe you know someone that's not saved. Maybe let, let them get it to them. Or maybe you want to encourage a Christian. 16th Psalm is wonderful. And uh, read it over several times. Meditate upon it. And I love this verse 11 that I, I texted out today. Thou wilt show me the path of life. In thy presence, God's presence, is fullness of joy. And at thy right hand, there are pleasures forevermore. God bless you. Share this with someone. Uh, we'll talk with you tomorrow, dear ones. You have a good evening. Bye now.